so you grew up in Hollywood. Yeah, I'm, I'm born and raised in LA, which is kind of rare. Um, but, you know, I've been blessed to get to travel all around the world and, you know, take photos. Yeah, what were your interests growing up? Oh my goodness. Um, so I was I was quite a, a nerdy kid. Um, as a kid, I, I loved playing video games, collecting sports cards. Um, I'm Jewish, so I was really big into the dreidel, which is like you spin this little guy around, and then if it lands a certain way, you get some money or not. And it's like early gambling, basically. I actually didn't know that, but yeah. that's how that works. So dreidel, 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 you know. Yeah. Uh, so uh, my Jewish roots, you know, uh, were really special to me um, but you know in school I was goofy and was awarded like um, most outrageous kid or whatever and then eventually the prom king which was rare and uh, I was pre uh, vice president of my school so I had some great early accomplishments but uh, <laughs> you know I, I never really realized like what that would turn into always a social butterfly huh yes <laughs> <laughs> do you have like a favorite film or like favorite films um yeah i mean uh again so you know i i grew up um where going to the movies was so special we didn't stream things like you had to wait and see things in the theater um and i i remember seeing the big lebowski it's a coen brothers film and was just like my mind was blown and you know the the character development in that and sort of just the storylines were like ridiculous and something that like really um, resonated with me um, and just the dude and his kind of casual lifestyle uh, was really something that like I wanted to embrace in, in some way. The aesthetics, I love that movie so much. Yeah. Or um, also, you know, I grew up watching like every episode of South Park. Um, I'm a huge South Park fan, actually. Yeah. Like massive. I was about to say that when you said the dreidel thing, I was like, I just like <laughs> to picture them singing it. <laughs> yeah, South Park. I mean, I'm so glad that the show is still on the air, and and I, I'm still like eager for every new episode. Yeah, I know they have like a new one, and I haven't seen it yet. Yes, but, HBO Max. Yeah, I'm like waiting to go back home because my friend's like waiting on me. He's like, we have to watch it together. So it is really a show it. that it's good seen with friends. Yeah. And actually, that's like a whole thing that I miss, too, is that, you know, the premieres of things, the fact that it airs at this time on this date before, like now you can stream everything and just watch in your bed. It was kind of like a moment to get together. Yeah, we should get back to that. I know. Um, can you talk a little bit about like the difference culturally, like working from like the early 2000s to currently? Like yeah. What, like the pros and cons, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, in the in the early 2000s, you know, the technology wasn't there. We didn't have Ubers or G even GPS right. to get around, right? So imagine what that did to partying. It's like you had to know where to go. You didn't have an Instagram story to sort of like lurk and see if it's worth going out that night you really had to be there to experience it. And so I think that created a much more raw and real energy within the parties. Um, also, you know, the smartphones just didn't exist like they do. So the actual nightlife culture was about socializing with people, not looking down on your phone, not taking selfies all night, um, and really like living in the moment, they say. Um, and I was there, you know, sort of almost in a disruptive way with my camera. Uh, a lot of these parties when I first started there weren't other people shooting and there weren't a bunch of flashes going off all night long It was sort of private and intimate and I just splashed into the scene um, trying to you know document this uh, Sort of amazing world that I had discovered. I was like a kid in the candy story like I was like underage and I was going to these parties. And I'm like this is like uh, Charlie and the chocolate factory, but you know for the hipsters Yeah um, what do you look for when you're taking pictures, like in a party? Um, and yeah, what I do you mean, gravitate yeah, towards? Yeah, yeah. I'm always really drawn to sort of like unique style, uh, crazy outfits, uh, makeup, hair, um, and then people really like having fun if they're dancing. Um, just sort of like again that real raw energy, less less. Um, and so when you see a lot of my early work, it's like these people are really like, you know, I don't know. They, they were they were doing this before a time of social media, 
And so the fact that they would spend so much time on their outfit just to go out and show it to the crowd, like that's what it was about. It wasn't to show it to the, the internet. Um, so that's, that's something that's interesting to me. Like it's crazy because I did grow up in that period as well, kind of, like kind of on the, like the, the brisk. Um, but I've been watching a lot of Seinfeld lately uh -huh. and it is like that where it's like so weird because they like don't have phones or anything. And so like a lot of their storylines revolve around them like not, you know, like lost in translation yes. because they don't have the phone yes. to like keep up with where they are. I was waiting for you in, in the park and you never showed up. I, I couldn't text you, you know, like yeah. you, you had to be there. Like there yeah. was, and then you don't know what might happen. And I think one of the cool things about New York energy especially is just literally the other day I was in the park and I bumped into a friend I hadn't seen in like 10 years and we caught up. And you know, so it's that sort of serendipitous synergy that that happens when you're walking around the city that you might see somebody or you might just be drawn and it's like a choose your own adventure like throughout your afternoon. Yeah, um, you were around like a lot of iconic people like as they were like coming up. What can you say, like do you have any takeaways from like the energy or like maybe the way that they networked that like kind of stuck with you? Um, yeah, I mean they always say like you can kind of like see like a star or there's some kind of star quality about people. And I think that I was just lucky to be in the right rooms a lot of the time where people were coming up and, um, you know, this whole industry is like a big machine. And so when you end up, um, it's not that there's a formula, but there's sort of a, an idea that they should be seen here or go to this party and then this happens to this. And, uh, I, I always say like the best networking can happen like in nightlife. Um, and then in terms of like specifics, you know, I was around a lot with like a young Katy Perry and again, just her, her drive and her personality is like infectious and you can see that in the images and you can see that in her style and then it only makes sense that she went on to have this sort of amazing pop star career that was so colorful and unique and um, sort of charismatic and very Katy. Um, and so that energy is like in her blood, basically. Yeah. Yeah. So what inspires you creatively, presently? Um, I mean, you know, I've been working on this book for a long time. It is finally out. So that's really exciting. And looking back at this era, um, I'm actually really inspired about what's happening like today. And the fact that there's, you know, groups of, of there's a, a new energy you know in in these in these cities and to document what that is and it's an evolution and you know we're out of the pandemic and so i think it's like a time to um express yourself a time to be you know creative again a time to you know make music you know become a fashion designer all these things are like happening again and there's like bubbling um, in the scene and so I think there's like a lot of big things that are about to like take off Yeah, like I want to also talk about your fitness stuff. Yeah, yeah So did you ever struggle with like your profession as far as having to go out all the time? Like yeah. did you ever like party with everyone else or were you, were you always like purposely did not party with everyone else? Yeah, I mean the I don't know if it would it would be like an urban legend or something, but everybody thinks that I'm like this wild and crazy party guy, um, but that's not the case. You know, I'll have the occasional beer um, or you know vodka soda or something, but I'm I'm really not uh, there to get trashed. I can stay up all night, and it's just off of like everybody else's energy, um, and I love actually like just seeing the progression of the night and how you know things evolve and sort of where the night goes and telling that story is like really exciting for me. Being um, conscious, like yeah, doing those things. Yeah, and being things. able to, yeah. to, to uh, actively capture it. Um, but then, uh, you know, after doing this for, you know, well over 10 years, uh, you know, traveling all over the time, the jet lag was real. Um, my routine was fucked, you know, eating late nights, you know, uh, egg and cheese bagel sandwiches at four in the morning on the way to LA, uh, JFK, like, you know, just not taking care of myself. And that's where sort of, I had the spark to, to start Cobra Fitness Club up. And that was sort of my, um, you know, answer to 
what was out in the fitness world was so aggressive and so about being fast and ripped and you know uh, buff and you know not what I wanted in my life I just wanted to be like healthy and happy and uh, you know I, I really was drawn to sort of the outdoors and hiking and bike riding and um, getting out in nature and doing that with friends and that's what was so special to me is that I was able to like sort of bring that party and that sort of nightlife energy to uh, fitness activities and playing fun music and taking photos and basically making it a fitness party. Yeah. yeah. Has it helped your like work ethic or like your work process to incorporate like more working out? Totally. Yeah. I mean and, like health. Oh my gosh. Cause the thing is, you know, with somebody that doesn't have like any rules and I can sort of make my own schedule and do whatever I want uh, on a given day to say, I have to go on a hike and I'm, I have to climb to the top of this mountain and I can't stop till the top. I don't stop till the top. Like, that's powerful. And the fact that you push yourself to your limit physically helps you with your work creatively. Um, and the idea that, you know, if you can accomplish whatever workout it is for 45 minutes in your day, that's gonna set you up for a way more impactful rest of your afternoon. And you could be like, oh, that was so hard. This work is easy now. Writing, yeah, I, writing 50 emails, I can do that, you know, and it yeah. was a, with ease. Is there anything that you wanna say about your book? Um, yeah, so I mean, the book is really special because this is a physical object. You know, I, I was born on the internet, and the fact that now this is this is just hundreds of my best photos that you, um, you know, that I captured over the years, and you know, just this raw energy. Everybody's just like in the moment, living life, and this is like a young Jeremy Scott, you know, the sidekick, T-Mobile sidekick. I love the sidekicks. They're so iconic, and Blackberries too. Yes, Blackberries. I feel like well. both are very. It, it hit me on my BBM, you know. Yeah. Um, but you know, <laughs> we have Paris Hilton paired with Corey Kennedy, um, taking all the gifts from a party that we were at, um, karaokeing here with Alexa Chung, uh, Z Bird, Kelly Osborne. You know, these are like intimate moments. We're singing uh, Boom Boom Pow, or, or Boom Boom Boom. Let me hear you say, way oh. That's even older than Boom Boom Pow. Um, I love the little illustrations too. Yeah, so like kind of add, added some ephemera. Um, but you know, it's just, these are, uh, there's a Blackberry and a, and a young me. Um, nice. 2006 hottest new phone, a Blackberry. Um, I thought you were gonna say hottest new photographer. <laughs> but, uh, On the scene. but yeah, like look, this guy's dressed in a wolf mask, this is like club kid energy. All these pins on his vest, you know, diamond tattoo on the chest. You know, it's just like. I love that photo actually. Yeah, this is from the misshapes. Um, but yeah, so a young Mickey Blanco. You know, a lot of the a lot of things that's cool is like pre-tattoos. Now everybody's like covered in tats. Um, fresher energy. Nick Zinner, yeah, yeah, yes. Um, just dropped a new record. So the other thing that's cool is a lot of these people that I photographed are still, you know, living their best lives and coming out with new work. And I think uh, it's a time that's you know they're calling it's a vibe shift, and it's true. Like the energy is changing and that there's a fact that the, the indie bands are, are, are being revived, you know, nightlife is being revived, the Cobra Snake is having a second coming, I'm back, <laughs> you know, shooting parties every night of the week and, um, you know, I'm really, really inspired to see what all this turns into. Yeah, that's yeah. exciting. Okay, I have a bonus question and ask everyone this question. Where is your favorite place to eat? Like hole in the wall, somewhere that maybe other people wouldn't know. Ah. Do you have any like go-to spot? Yes. Um, well, in uh, LA, there's a place called Beverly Hills Juice. Okay. Um, best smoothies, best fresh juices. It's been around for like 50 years. Um, definitely go there and you can come hiking with me after. Or we can nice. go on a hike and then get a juice. Um, I'm so down. But you know, I mean, people probably hate on this, but I'm a I'm a big fan of Chipotle, and uh, it's you know it's consistent and it's good quality in my opinion, and it fills you up and it's uh, it's efficient. So you know, on road trips it works. Um, you know, they're they're located. The New York ones are a bit questionable, um, but uh, but yeah, big fan of 
uh, you know, this is also I, um, another thing I like to do is get the one dollar unsweet iced tea from McDonald's. Zero calories. Nice. It's just um, refreshing, and you know, one dollar for this this size beverage is this is like four fifty at Dunkin' Donuts. I never knew that. Mm -hmm. I never knew that they did one dollar. Yeah, one dollar any beverage this size. I mean, they get you in there to buy like a burger or something, but if you just go in for the the drink, you're you're making it out. Um, you know, unscathed. Unscathed, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, thank you so much for your time. Yeah, thank you.